What's up folks? Welcome back to the channel. Boozer here. Thanks for stopping by. Today's video, I want to make a celebratory video for our incoming 7-day login champion, Aidlin. Um, to celebrate, we're going to do a quick tier list of all the past login champions. We'll see how Aidlin stacks up against some of those old login champions that uh, we've had in the past. But before we get into that, I want to let everybody know that's watching the video that I will be doing a giveaway. So part of our monthly giveaway, we have two monthly giveaways as part of our content creator stuff. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be doing five winner giveaway for 540 gems and I believe one ancient shard. Um, so if you guys want to get involved in that, leave a comment with your ID so that I can give you the rewards if you win and list your first login champion that you've received in this game uh, you can write whatever you want of course and of course any likes comments or subscribes definitely help the channel out so i do appreciate that very much without further ado let's jump into the tier list for the top login champions of all time all right guys so right above me is our fancy tier list maker that um I have made a template of so if you guys want to play around with it or anything like that or add to it or use it um, I'm gonna leave a link in the description below it's a template so anyone can use it um, but yeah so that's what I have um, in terms of what the login champions were from all time if I missed one let me know in the comments below um, in terms of how I'm going to rate them tier lists are obviously very um, finicky things uh, and they are dependent on the progress that you have in the game of course and obviously the content that they're tackling so some champions that are terrible uh, usually um, might be really good in some situations and might even be a game changer for you for example uh, Elegaeus which is generally just a pretty bad champion um, that champion was the difference between me finishing Faction Wars 21 back in the day uh, and not finishing Faction Wars 21 so Something like Elegaeus is a great example um, that I have. Um, so I want to try to look at all these champions from a objective way. Um, I'm going to grade them on general usefulness, um, areas of usefulness, whether the area is difficult, easy, uh, how replaceable, how irreplaceable the champion is. Um, general over overall impact. I don't want to just talk about it from a beginner standpoint, mid game or end game. I want to try to encompass everybody. Um, obviously some rosters will make some champions completely obsolete um, right out of the gate but I don't want to leave those out and I don't want to leave out the free to plays or low spends with limited rosters I want to consider everybody uh, and all these champions in their application so with that being said let's start off first with um, Alexander the sharpshooter so Alexander sharpshooter was um he was a basically a promo with uh, I believe um, I forgot what game it is, but some shooter game. Um, he's an esports uh, celebrity, I guess. Uh, Alexander, I forgot his last name, but uh, yeah. So they made a character out of him. Pretty cool. He's high elf. You know, got the archer style. Um, his big thing is that he's a three turn AOE decrease defense. He also has a chance to play weekend against the um, these tribes, uh, these factions. Um, you know, it's definitely power crept uh, obviously um the hit is an okay hit it's not an insane hit that's another thing he doesn't actually deal insane damage and this ability is definitely a lot weaker than a lot of comparable abilities from like for example stagnite which places decreased defense and a decreased attack or lydia which places decreased defense weaken and then speed up and then strengthen uh, but this is not really like his specialty he does Try to deal some damage with his A3, a single target hit, remove all buffs uh, before attacking. Um, so, you know, he he tries. He has low base attack, which doesn't help his cause. Um, and he, yeah, he's a damage dealer that has debuffs, like a useful debuff here. He has a freeze on the A1. Um, yeah, accuracy and all battles. But he just doesn't do enough damage. So overall usefulness, he's definitely low. Um, and, you know, unless you just want to use him for his AoE decreased defense, He's a legendary. He requires books to make this happen. War Maiden is a rare. Um, Dilesia is an epic that doesn't require any books for a 100% AoE decrease defense. So overall, Archer is pretty bad. Uh, sorry, Sharpshooter is pretty bad here. So I'm going to give him a overall rating of probably a C. You probably never will use him. He might be useful maybe for a damage dealer. 
um, for the high elves, but he's not going to be pitching in too much damage for you there either. All right, so with that being said, let's move to the next login champion, uh, Oryx. So Eryx here is a Knight, uh, knight Revenant uh, Legendary. You get her, I believe, somewhere around 650 days. So it's quite a bit into the game already. Um, <clears throat> she is an HP based damage dealer, but she also has support in her kit as well. She's found some interesting use cases uh, lately in the kind of like end game. Um, Obviously, at you know 650 days, you're no longer early game. So when she comes into the picture, she's likely not going to be super, super strong. Her A1 is pretty okay, removes uh, a buff. You see her a lot in Live Arena where she's geared as a nuker, and she's played against uh, Lockout Champions. So if she gets locked out, it's not the end of the world. Her A1 is where she does most of her damage. She does have this uh, stun ability, and then she does have this uh, ally protection counter attack ability so it kind of synergizes together she plays counter attack she hits with the a1 does a lot of damage that way um she's found some use cases lately where if you put her in slayer slayer gear and give her uh the leech mastery from the defense tree uh she can actually uh solo hard spider so you just need good slayer gear obviously that's super end game and like i said for live arena you can gear her as a nuker use her um for her um a1 damage you can also gear her in like stun sets for additional stuns just because her a1 just spams the aoe's so overall utility when she comes out is pretty low but in end game if you're able to farm you know hard spider that's pretty good with food um so overall i would say she did find some usability in this game so i'm going to give her a little bit of a b um obviously not uh super super useful like for a lot of things like for example hydra clan boss all that stuff um, but she does have some use and especially in some pretty key areas. So I'm going to give her a B rating here. Moving on next, our next champion is another high elf. It's going to be, uh, Del, Deli, Deliana here, Deliana. So Deliana here, I feel like was probably one of the first login champions. She might've been the first maybe, um, but obviously we can't get her anymore from login rewards, but he was one of the first seven day login champions. I think she looks super cool. There's a lot of promo around her and all that stuff. Um, she has an A1 AOE, which is really good, obviously with stun set, curse set, that kind of thing. I think her general use case is in Hydra. Um, she does bring a AOE block buffs, which is one of the best and most critical um, debuffs you could bring to Hydra. The problem with this is it's on a four turn cooldown, which is not the best. So maybe she's a good candidate for like relentless so she can ex get some extra turns. Um, but four turn cooldown on the AOE block buffs, not super strong against Hydra, but in a pinch, she can be used. And, you know, if you've been playing for a while, she would have been free at some point. Uh, she does bring decrease resistance, making the accuracy on your team uh, go a little bit further. AoE Leech is also very useful for Hydra. And then she has a passive that makes building her out a little bit easier. So her accuracy goes up for each um, for every 1,000 1, HP uh, that she has. And then she has like an active effect where she places strength in on all allies. A little bit of a team support. I think generally she's okay. Um, she could even be like a campaign farmer even. Um, she good HP, good base stats. Um, so her use case mostly is in Hydra. And Hydra is one of the more difficult uh, content uh, for, for most players. And the fact that she brings one of the best debuffs, uh, even though it's on a four turn, still very useful. Definitely find some use cases for her. I'm going to put her in the B tier as well for general use. Um, overall, you won't be using her too much, but in certain spots, you will uh, get some play from uh, from you for sure. Moving on, we're going to look at uh, another login reward champion. Uh, it's going to be Mr. Artak himself. Where's Artak? Mm, I, I messed up. He's an orc. <laughs> there he is, Artak. He's a pretty recent one. I think he's just under a year old now. He's maybe like 10 months old. Um, but Artak is an absolute game changer. So if you've been playing within a year, Artak would be absolutely insane for you. Um, he brings the AoE HP burn. He brings the AoE detonation as well as the AoE decrease attack. And then an A1 extension of HP burn. His passive is a little bit uh, quirky. It gives him additional damage um, 
whenever HP burn it activates and it, decre it destroys his max HP. But his damage is going to come from HP burns, not from like crit damage and all that stuff. So it's a little bit interesting. He has great base stats. Um, he's a hard carry in a lot of areas. He's basically can be used in every area of the game um, to different degrees of effectiveness. Um, he could be a campaign farmer too. He could be a campaign farmer because it's A1 AoE. Um, he can't be used in arena. He's not going to be an arena nuker or anything like that. But in all PVE content, is insanely good. There's lots of content out, out there showcasing how good he is. Currently, I only really use him as a spider HP burn activator. And I use him to solo Ice Golem. And that's about it. And he's if incredibly good at Ice Golem. So I think, um, considering that there's not too many options to farm Ice Golem at his level of speed, uh, as well as all his versatility all throughout this entire game, um, there is no question that Artek is one of the best login champions of probably all time, and he definitely deserves to be in the super, super S tier here. Moving on, we got Cleopatrix. Cleopatrix. Uh, she's a skinwalker um spirit nuker here so cleopatrics um you first start getting cleopatrics after 270 days so your monthly reward you start collecting fragments for her i believe it takes four months to get cleopatrics uh, to get all the fragments for her um, so she's at minimum one year uh, login reward legendary um, at the time when she comes out, she may or may not be super useful to you, to you. I believe she was buffed at one point to to make her damage a little bit more relevant. Uh, what made her really good was actually this um, AOE hex ability. So the hex ability back in the day, hex was not very common. Curse set didn't exist in its current form. Um, so when Cleopatrix has uh, was you know introduced and it had the hex debuff. It, uh, it in instantly made her kind of interesting and viable um, as a hex setup champion. Um, her big slam is going to be this AOE um, increased crit rate, increased crit damage slam. Has a chance to place uh, place block active skills if they're under hex, but her damage is actually okay. Um, Fifteen thirty one base attack gives her a chance to at least scale up okay um, the problem is that skinwalkers has tons of good damage dealers and she doesn't really uh, bring much else she has low base hp so her survivability is not super great she has this uh, counter attack for extra damage she can be used in like low level hydra as like a nuking damage dealer if you can keep her alive uh, i did try her out in like normal and hard and she actually does okay just because she does bring obviously the hex debuff which is very very strong uh, she does have some counter attack um abilities for some extra extra damage that way but overall her general utility in the game is pretty low um as a general damage dealer she's not particularly strong as a setup champion she's not needed anymore um and when you get her at about you know about 12 13 14 months into the game you're not going to have insane gear on her to uh, make super usefulness of her of her damage or make up for her shortcomings so overall i'm going to put her in the c category most likely you won't be using her for too much unless you're really short a damage dealer in the spirit affinity um, but in that case you probably can make a case for somebody like magnar which is probably a better overall arena nuker for example than leo patrick's here all right so moving on we're gonna be taking a look at Gerda Bogbrew. Gerda Bogbrew. So she's going to come from your um, your daily logins. Uh, you're going to get her, I believe, 17 months? 17 or 18 months. Um, but yeah, by the time you get her, she's not going to be super useful. And honestly, she's not super useful even for like endgame applications. If you don't know what she does, she places a um, not even 100% chance to debuff spread. Um, and it has this condition has to be under weaken so it's a little bit of a strange kit to be honest the a2 attacks all enemies 80 percent chance of placing weaken 100 percent chance when booked so you place the weaken after you place the weaken if after attacking if the weaken doesn't um if the weaken doesn't get applied or gets resisted or whatever then you get a hundred percent chance of placing two poisons then the poisons can't be resisted so you either place a three turn weaken or you place a three turn double poison both of which 
is a pretty weak ability on a three even on a three turn cooldown if you put them together let's say you put them together and you you had an attack that placed weaken and then placed two poisons i would say even that is kind of a weak ability so in general this is like two weak this is like this is a pretty weak ability and but it's conditional it's not even like it's not even guaranteed anymore it's one or the other not both um so yeah that's her a2 her a3 100 chance of this one's actually a bit better i think 100 chance of removing one buff from enemies and then placing two poisons and then it also has a chance to kind of soft cleanse your team on a three turn so her a3 is actually much more decent um, although you know not particularly great but still has a little bit more going for her than the a2 for example her passive makes uh, very little sense whenever they receive a debuff turn meter is decreased uh, by three percent fair enough uh, resistance all battles decent base stats all around but honestly i mean she's a poisoner doesn't have any self-sustain has some turn meter stuff has a weaken irresistible poisons could be a thing but not really i've never really seen her used in any real application uh to me she's the first d tier champion um you get her at about 17 18 months and i can't see her being used in many places i mean maybe clan boss but if you're 18 months into the game you can probably do a little bit better than a legendary poisoner i mean by that time you probably have frozen banshee um so yeah I, i'm not too hyped about her i mean for me she's in my in my vault uh, but let me know in the comments below if you guys found some use cases for her uh, would be interesting to see all right moving on we got this one might be the first login i'm not 100 sure it might be the second login but we have one of the first champions from the shadowkin faction we got ninja the so ninja if you guys don't know obviously is um you know he's a content creator in his own right for another game called fortnite um I guess he was the first, uh, one of the first. He's not the first, but he was the one that was heavily publicized um, as being um, kind of like a promo for a character in game. Um, obviously, you can't get Ninja anymore. The promo ended, probably contractual reasons or whatever. Um, so, if, you know, these are super exclusive champions. But Ninja, when he first came out, I remember the reception was kind of lukewarm on him. But he is actually an insane champion. He can be used basically anywhere in the game. Uh, you can even use him in arena because he can act, he actually has an AoE hit and he has CC as well. Although his main move will be his A2 Hail Burn, which places um, which uh, sorry not which places the HP burn and then ignites them right away, so you get the damage right away. His A1 brings a decrease defense and then his A3 brings a freeze as well as reducing uh, reducing the uh, cooldown on this um his passive gives him some additional attack over longer fights um, but yeah he's a great champion when he first came out he's he instantly was you know slotted into a ton of teams to be a boss killer he's actually insanely good against single target bosses um and yeah he just does a ton of damage he elevated a lot of people's clan boss teams boss teams uh you know boss encounters definitely got uh, shaved off a lot of time for example like griffin griffin got annihilated by this guy for example, uh, Clan Boss got annihilated by this guy. Probably still gets annihilated by this guy if anybody has him. Um, but yeah, he's a great champion when he came out. Still is a great champion even after all this time. So he definitely deserves to be an S tier uh, login champion. All right, moving on. Our next uh, personality turned uh, Raid Shadow Legends character. We have Rhonda Rusi, Bannerlord. She's a, kind of a recent one, I think, maybe one year old now. Uh, but same situation as Ninja. She's a real-life person, pro mode, um, into a character for Raid Shadow Legends. Um, she's an MMA, MMA fighter, uh, or was, retired now. But uh, that's her claim to fame. Um, so yeah, she kind of has the you know fighting stance here. you got the flaming fists. How good is she? She's actually really, really good. Uh, she deals a ton of damage. She got an A1 triple hit. Um, she's got the triple hit A2, which has this block uh, passive, block passive ability that cannot be resisted. Um, and block actives cannot be resisted. So these moves don't require accuracy, which is really, really big. They cannot be resisted, which makes, which makes them very special and unique to her. Um, 
She also has built-in ignore defense. Um, her A3 is an AoE, double hit AoE. And, uh, well, you, it's, it's uh, also going to get a damage boost if the uh, first hit brings down the HP. She also has a passive effect here that it makes her immune to turn meter reduction when this skill is not on cooldown. It's kind of interesting to add this bit into her kit. So it kind of makes her kind of like, oh, unstoppable kind of theme, I guess. Her passive is actually also good in your corner. It has a 15% chance to basically attack with your team. Um, and she has a built-in sustain with this little shield. Her shield is very small, almost negligible but it is a little bit extra uh good base attack decent base speed obviously low survivability but as a damage dealer she's actually quite decent her multipliers aren't like insanely sky high which makes sense because her kit's really good um you can use her as a pure debuffer just for this block passive active ability doesn't require accuracy or anything or you can build her as a nuker and uh with no accuracy and she can still do all this stuff for you um she's generally used in arena um as a wave clear she's not going to be you know she can be useful as a wave clear the block passive active ability is not super super relevant for like dungeon clearing stuff um for boss damage she's not particularly as strong as like hp burn hp ignite champions um but for arena she is one of the best login champions for arena she's not obtainable anymore and there's not really a champion like her in the game um with the uh with with this block passive block active ability because it's irresistible so with that being said ronda although she lacks a lot of uh, utility and some pve uh content her pvp performance is quite strong i'm going to give her an a rating here very very good champion if you still have her uh definitely use her in the arena she's a hard counter to uh, rotos for example and she can shut down a lot of the uh tricky tricky champions with the strong passive abilities all right, moving on, we got um, one of my favorites, actually, uh, Scylla Drakes. Scylla Drakes, you get at uh, 180 days of playing this game. at So that's about six months into this game. Um, personally, at the time Scylla Drakes comes out, it's the perfect time for a player um, because you're probably slugging through content. You're, you might get stuck in some places. At six months, when she comes, she basically carries you through any wave based content so whether it be dungeons doom tower um whatever she can do it faction wars if you haven't finished your first faction wars 21 she's going to be the one that helps carry you uh, to finish that's what makes barbarian faction wars kind of trivial because Silver drakes is that strong uh you can build her a couple ways obviously I, I haven't made a guide on her but i kind of feel like i should because she's so good and i love her and she was like one of the most um important champions for me she was my first legendary that i ever booked on my first account that's how bad my legendary luck was but i also saved the books for her uh, when i got her and i booked her out she literally carried me through like all the dungeons all the doom tower hard um but yeah she's incredibly good she brings the uh double hit stun ability here and then she has the revive with the uh ally protection to keep your um your team going and then her passive uh, brings a heal for your whole team, your A1 decreased speed. She's a total package, kind of like support champion. Obviously, very power crept nowadays because there's champions that do three turn 100% stuns. There's no need for double hit 20% stuns. Um, but when, you know, back in the day, she's quite, quite strong. Obviously, uh, at six months in the game, if you have no good legendary, she's going to be very good. She's definitely worth your books to help you progress through this game. And I think at six months, if you've been struggling to progress, she's going to be a, a massive savior for you. So just based off of what she can do um, and basically all types of content in the game, she's actually still relevant against like Doom Tower, uh, hard bosses, for example. She'll help you there as well, just because her passive keeps your, keeps your team alive. Um, I'm going to place her in the A category because she's so important to new or mid-game players that are struggling. And she's kind of like a guarantee that you'll be able to progress or get some progression at the six-month mark. Obviously, end-game players won't be using her anymore uh, because yeah, um, they're going to have better options. But if you have no options, she is absolutely godly for you. Moving on next, we got uh, UDK's Ultimate Death Knight. 
was a seven day login reward champion comes from the undead hordes ultimate death knight everybody knows ultimate death knight was kind of memeish you know he's the ultimate version of the death knight which is the un, uh which is the common um and there's a bunch of advertisement around him uh hyping him up and all that stuff when he came out everyone kind of thought he was kind of quirky uh, he didn't didn't really see the super value in him um but actually ultimate death knight can uh basically carry through a, a lot of different dungeons even by himself so even in solo content he's actually quite good uh, his passive, which is what he's basically uh, known for, basically when hits, uh, basically any kind of single target hit will redirect into him first. Um, he has lots of sustainability. He can heal himself. He gains stats for each dead ally. Um, he has a shield and heals here. He has provokes, uh, decreased attack, fears. Very annoying champion, kind of like a wall in a lot of sense. Um, but the fact that he can solo content dungeon content he can you know he's in platinum arena defenses he's in live arena the top of live arena he's everywhere um really shows how strong this login champion is um and for a free champion that everyone gets it's actually pretty insane good base stats for a support champion um he does require 10 books or so but it's definitely worth it if you have him he's insane you can pull him from shards so he's still available um, for me, uh, his general versatility, he's only not really used in, I guess, Hydra. Uh, but you can definitely use him everywhere. If you're progressing through the game, you can even use him as a spider tank. So the spider will have to hit into him first, for example, all the little spiderlings. Um, you know, he can solo dragon in a toxic set. He can, he can do all sorts of random crazy stuff. Lots of content out there on this guy. He's one of the most hated arena champions for sure. But because he's the most hated arena champion, I'm going to put him in the A tier. He's just an incredible champion. So moving on from Ultimate Death Knight, we got a Dark Elf, Visix, who was basically generally, generally regarded as one of the worst Void legendaries in the game for many, many years. She was buffed into relevancy. Um, and it was actually a really, really good buff. You get her at day 270, so it's not too deep into the game where she's totally useless um and i would say that at 270 if you're struggling she is a a, a savior similar to Silda drakes they both have similar kind of kits where they're both like basically wave control uh, but if you put them together they are very very strong so you got a1 multi-hit turn meter this is really good against something like even like dark fey fire knight really solid a1 a2 has got the AoE decrease speed, ally protection. The AoE decrease speed is especially good in Hydra. Um, obviously, any kind of AoE decrease speed for Hydra is incredibly um, important. It's on a three turn, so it's not. It might. It's probably not 100% uptime, but it's definitely good as a backup. And then you got the A uh, A3. Sorry, I said A A3 here. It's A2. Here's the A3. It's going to be a three turn AoE provoke uh, with a bit of a shield to keep her going. Um, the AoE Provoke is obviously a little bit, it feels a little bit weak, but Provoke became really, really important in Hydra. So we really need this move on a three turn. It's kind of okay, but you're probably going to still have it drop off. But the Provoke uh, debuff is definitely very important for Hydra to control the head of DK. Um, and then Faction Crypt's Aura here, not particularly strong. Good base defense. She is defense based. For day 270, she's very good. Pair her with Silda Drakes. You have two free login champions, and these two can help you go through all the waves in hard Doom Tower. And that's probably roughly the uh, level of progress that you're probably expecting um, at that point in the game. So I think at the time where she comes into the game, um, it's actually very important for the player. And I think she's actually very good. She is going to hard carry you in Faction Wars as well. Basically, her uh, control, her AoE control here is very, very powerful for Faction Wars. Uh, she's definitely worth booking if you have no better option. Um, it's hard to use her without books because her A1 requires the 100% against Dark Fey, Fire Knight, for example. And then the cooldown reduction on both of these AoEs is very important. So she does require books, which might not be you know, in surplus at day 270. With that being said, she also brings the endgame application that Silda Drakes doesn't really bring. Um, but Silda Drakes does function a little bit better without books. So both of them, I feel, are very similar to each other. They come along, you know, still within the first nine months of the game. 
Um, so for me, V6 comes in at an A tier, being able to be useful at day 270 as well as be an end game Hydra team makes her very, very useful uh, as a login champion as well. All right, moving on back to the mighty skinwalkers. We got one of the best login champions, recent one, Sun Wukong, incredible, incredible champion, very versatile, probably one of the best, if not, I would say maybe top two best login champions of all time he can be played both as a support champion uh basically to apply sheep or to strip and place block buffs or he can be played as a damage dealer he smacks super hard with his a2 the splash damage can wipe entire teams um, his a3 not super strong uh, multipliers but obviously bringing lots of utility with these strip and block buffs his passive makes him stand out, giving him basically 100% turn meter, 100% HP when he is revived after uh, everybody takes three turns after he dies. So this ability uh, really sets him apart because it basically gives him survivability without having to build any survivability in his kit. He can be full damage. He could even be no speed. He could even have no speed, to be honest. Uh, although it's not recommended to build him with no speed, but he could technically have no speed die come back and then just drop the bombs um after he comes back of course you still need speed to uh um, obviously catch up your turn meter if somebody has higher turn meter than you for example but you know the just the general versatility of him is very very good he can play obviously arena pvp he is very relevant in arena um he can be played all pve content wave content uh, boss content is not particularly strong. Um, his A2 does hit pretty hard, but he's not going to match up super well like in clan boss, for example. Um, his aura is a speed aura for arena only, which is obviously very good for a damage dealer to have a speed aura. Uh, it's not super, super common so far. Um, and he does have, you know, obviously some good applications here where he can come back, uh, even dying on some bosses, for example, Doom Tower bosses. Um, you know, pair him with Annabelle, for example, or uh, Biringiri against Bommel. Bommel will just keep killing Sun Wukong over and over again, but he'll come back, do more damage, and then speed up the runs. He'll speed up the runs in all those solo applications against Bommel, for example. Um, he's also very good in Hydra. He's a damage dealer that has debuffs, and it's a very important debuff. It's a three-turn AoE block buffs. Like I said, it's very rare to have it on a champion that does other things so for wukong he actually does damage um so yeah basically he can be played anywhere he can be built many ways and he's still very relevant today um he's definitely an s tier login champion for me i think for i think everyone can agree this guy is a definitely game changer definitely top priority to build if you got him early as well uh don't feel bad if you booked him out and use him because you're going to use him every day for a long long time for sure all right, moving on to Rathalos, Banner Lords, Force, Affinity, Damage Dealer. So he was um, a seven-day login during the Monster Hunter promo earlier this year. Uh, you won't be able to get him anymore from shards or anything like that. But similar to some of the other uh, limited edition uh, champions like Ninja, for example, he's really, really strong as a damage dealer. Um, his main, main thing is basically his uh, ability to get all this increased damage when bosses are under HP burn. He's very good in this application if you can set him up properly as every fifth skill uh, used by this champion deals 200% more damage. So if you can set him up properly with HP burn and uh, somehow coordinate his abilities to work with that uh, kind of passive boost, he's going to deal a ton of damage for you. Um, in terms of like how replaceable that is he doesn't deal like such insane damage like for example um in hydra for example he doesn't deal such insane damage that he's not replaceable um he does good damage but that's kind of all he does as well he doesn't have like incredible utility uh really anywhere in the game he's purely a damage dealer and mainly a boss killer he's good against clan boss he's good against hydra um, but in general content, he might not be the best. And also, the setups for him require specific gear, specific uh, champs, and you know, in some cases, specific order uh, of events. So for early game, mid game, he might not be the best option for you as well. Um, so not particularly easy to build because these kind of damage dealers, 
they rely on incredible stats. And in this case, for Rathlos, he also requires a level of setup as well. With that being said, a little bit of lack of uh, a lack of usability for early game and a little bit of lack of uh, usability. He's more in the late game. Um, he's good in the late game, but not so much in the early game uh, or if you're low on resources. I'm going to put him in the B category. He's good, but he's going to be uh, not usable for a lot of people for a long time. Uh, and lastly, we're going to jump into our current login champion that we're going to get. And it's going to be Ace. Uh, sorry, Aidlin. Aidlin from the Sacred Orders. Actually, no, she's not a Sacred Order. She's a Banner Lord, another Banner Lord. There's too many Banner Lords. Uh, Aidlin, where is she? She's not in the game yet. <laughs> That's a good one. But basically, Aidlin. So I'll bring up the kit here just for people that want to see. So basically, Aidlin. The big thing about Aidlin is that. She does have a slightly unique A3. Her A3 places sleep, decrease speed, and decrease attack. There's not too many champions that... First of all, sleep is a bit of a rare debuff. And then to have it with several other debuffs is kind of unique. She also has a little bit of unique condition where she can ignore block debuffs. Currently, there's no super good use for this move. Uh, she is marketed and targeted towards Sand Devil. Um, they did mention that they will rebalance Sand Devil in the future. We don't know what that is right now. But in her current form, she's basically as good as any other champion that can do a uh, sleep debuff. Um, she is um, she does have affinity she doesn't have affinity issues because it's a place, so she can go up against like spirit affinity bosses, for example. Um, so she has that going for her. The thing that's not going for her is that she's a legendary champion that basically has an ability and a kit that is probably comparable to epic champions. For example, Cornelia is an epic dwarf that has the um, same type of sleep. It's a place sleep um, and she's an epic and yeah, it doesn't require legendary books. So for an early game champion, she's not going to be super helpful. She's not particularly good in waves, arena, boss content. Because most bosses don't get slept, uh, and to just book out a champion just for a healer, it's kind of not worth it, to be, to be honest, especially as an early game player. As a late game player, you're probably looking at not using her if you have any of the epics that um, can replace her with the sleep. Um, there's going to be better options, uh, cheaper options as well, if you've been playing the game for a long time. So for me, she doesn't really fit into any um, progress level, any kind of player progress level um, to, to be used and the fact that she's basically targeted towards sand devil only which is a dungeon that most early game or mid game players for that matter shouldn't really focus on means that her use case is extremely limited currently uh, so with that being said the brand new login champion Aidlin joins gerda in the d tier for me anyways guys Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you guys think about that tier list that we put up together. I think it's pretty much, I think it's pretty okay. There might be maybe one, maybe some conversations about how bad Alexander is, I guess. I guess Alexander could be a D. Um, and maybe Rx or Rathalos could be one, one tier higher. I don't know. Uh, but it honestly depends a lot on your own progress, of course. Uh, and this is just, my best, uh, my best kick of the can at, at um, rating these champions in the most general way possible. Anyways, guys, that's it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Don't forget to give away your ID. Leave your comment on your first login champion. And uh, we'll pick a winner in a future video. Anyways, guys, have a great day. And I'll see you guys in the next one.